Hello, Rem the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 228. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. It's so good to be here in the podcast studio. We're a little late this week because there's been appointments with Mike's mom and and things are kind of behind, but it's great to be here and to get to share the Word of God with you, give you some encouragement. And um, how about that, hon? Do you think that that we've got some strength here this morning. Coming we we from God. got some strength. I tell He's you what, got some tea. <laughs> I, I got some tea and I'm loaded for bear this morning. Uh, you know, it felt you know, I, I was sitting uh, at the hospital when my mom had her, her test run yesterday, and it just didn't feel right because it's Tuesday morning and I was supposed to be in the studio doing KIB, and it did just felt like I was I was out of sorts. You know, <laughs> out of sync, out of sync with with reality the way things are supposed to be. Uh, but uh, we got some, you know. It's interesting, Mary, when, whenever I read in the Word of God, uh, I love the book of Revelation. I think it's becoming more pertinent by the day, that whenever God moves, whenever God acts, there's great praise and worship in heaven because he is doing so. Mm-hmm. They're and always crying out holy. <laughs> always crying out holy. And in fact, one of the greatest worship sessions, and I believe it's Revelation chapter 12, ever recorded in the Bible, is when Jesus takes the... Uh, scroll with the seven seals Mm -hmm. and it not only includes everything in heaven the bible says that everything on earth and everything under the earth will declare that he's worthy to open a scroll i'd I'd just like to see nancy pelosi stop in the middle of of one of her (laughs) we're going to impeach trump and all of a sudden worthy is the lamb because he's (laughs) well i've never seen so much digging in my life to try to get something Uh, and this this is all about a spiritual battle it is it's not about um you know, the way that, that the media portrays anything, it's it's you have to know what God's doing. And right now God's using the president to change things in our nation that need to be changed for his kingdom's sake. They're they're scared to death he's gonna overturn Roe versus Wade. That's it. And it's it's about the Supreme Court justices, the future of that. And um, mostly what I've been hearing is I'm seeking God and, and going in prayer. You know, he's taken me twice to Psalm ninety two. And he's taking me to other psalms, talking a lot about, you know, bring out the psaltery. You know, it says, upon the harp with a solemn sound. Uh, we know we're coming up to, uh, you know, we're starting out with the, the Feast of Trumpets this next weekend. And that's a time of announcements, isn't it, sweetheart? It's a time of announcements. I believe that it's a, a, a uh, divine rehearsal of uh, the harpazo of the church, which I believe is pre-wrath. is going to be toward almost the end of the tribulation period. And I tell my pre uh, my pre um, tribulation friends that uh, if they're right, I'll give my high five on the way up. But I'd rather be prepared for tribulation and surprised by rapture than the other way around. Um, but one of the things that when when God's getting ready to move, uh, there there's something about the feast that the, most of the body of Christ we we have been disenfranchised. We have been uh, these things have been obfuscated on purpose because they were replaced with other holidays that are actually pagan in origin to hide that the feasts are not only remembering what God had done, the, the concept of the Moadim, these appointed times where God says, I will meet with you. Well, first of all, that's a good thing. We have a guaranteed God is saying, you know, it's, it, usually we're trying to get God to show up. On those appointed days, he's waiting for us to show up right? because he said, I'm already going to be there. But they're all about Jesus. They're, they're all about his prophetic timetable of what he's going to do. And I remember years ago hearing one minister say, if you don't understand the feast, it's like having a clock, but someone removed off the, uh, removed off the arms. So you never know, really know what time it is. And the Feast of Trumpets, there are several things that, that go in on this. I believe it is a, a divine rehearsal of the Harpazo of the Church. It teaches us, uh, in fact, that when you, when you have the Feast of Trumpets, it's 10 days, 10 days of awe, which I believe there are days that God's wrath is going to be poured out before the Valley of Armageddon, which is seen with the, with the Day of Atonement. But we also look at other concepts uh, with, within uh, the Hebraic people, especially I, I like to look at it in, in King David's day and many of those days, that it was, it was after the Feast of Trumpets, 
between that and the Day of Atonement that the king was in the field, which meant that the you, you didn't have to go through all the red tape and the and the uh, and the bureaucracy that you would normally have to have that any citizen could walk up to the king and discuss what was going on in the country. Ooh, that's pretty rich considering Jesus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and how he loved to get out and talk to people anyway. And so uh-huh. there, there, is, there is a prophetic window between the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement for, for really just intercession, for praise, uh, to, to intercede. I, I think you want, you want to talk about the court of heaven working when the king actually comes off of his judgment throne and comes out among the people and says, mm. what do we need to take care of to make things better? I think that's where we're headed, sweetheart. Yeah. I really do. I think this is such a critical time. And the time for God's people. I mean, there there's a reason that God is prompting us now to start praising. Absolutely. Because that's an important part of warfare. <laughs> and as you get into, you know, you start with the, the Feast of Trumpets and you move toward the Day of Atonement, there is righteous judgment dispatched on the Day of Atonement. And we need that. Mike, if we don't have some righteous judgment, this nation is going to cease to be a free nation. I mean, we, we we're know gonna, that we're going to become some, a communistic nation, if right? Not and and we know that there are things going. You know, there's a deep state and things that have always been going on, but but we're going to see it come to the surface, and so it's so important right now uh, for us to praise. It's hard to praise, especially if you're having a rough time, if you're not feeling good, you know, if you're discouraged, and you know, there may be people listening, Mike, that feel like I'm not seeing God doing anything, but I can promise you this. He is always working. He is orchestrating. Imagine him knowing the beginning from the end, seeing every opportunity for a person to make a, a um, you know, a judgment in their life, make a decision in their life, giving them the free will to make it, and then and then keep working with that scenario throughout time to give every person every opportunity to be saved. Imagine the greatness of that. I mean, we can take that right there and say, Father, I may not see anything with my eyes, but I know that you're working because you're that great God. You're a God of goodness. You're a God of faithfulness, faithfulness to your word. And so this is really an exciting yeah. time. I'm get, as, I, as God's taken me these, these psalms and things, is I'm getting excited. Now, at the same time, Mike, we have some really yucky stuff brewing. We've got doctors warning about leprosy in Los Angeles with all of the, you know, the people going to the bathroom out in the in the public. This is like, you know, that's what caused the, um, yeah. the big plague back in the Middle Ages, and so we've got they're saying there's typhus. We've got this thing with mosquitoes where it's in, I think they said it's four states, and there's the it's like one out of three people die when they get that it causes encephalitis, a swelling of the brain. So we've got we've got some opportunities here to take our authority and you know that's I did this a long time ago with different flus and stuff is I'd say father I you know as far as our our authority goes as far as like a ministry but I know this is my in my state I can stand here and forbid this sickness to come past the boundaries in the name of Jesus, who so I just start asking forgiveness for the sins in the area you're in and saying father give us a Goshen <laughs> give us we know that there's a precedent in the word of God where he pours out judgment, and provides protection. You know, that was the whole beginning, the blood over the doorposts yeah. in, in Egypt. And so so right now we, we've got to begin planning as things like this happen. We're, we can be in a safe place. We can be guarded individually. We can be guarded as we just got to keep on top of ask forgiveness for the sins because the more power that's built. You know, remember that story with Henry Groover to where he was over um, overseas and there was that horrible breakout. I think it was malaria because it's, it's mosquito-borne. And uh, he prayed and God sent in a swarms of dragonflies to eat up the mosquitoes. Yeah. God's got things, you know, that he can do in – in just a snap of a finger that can protect people. Well, and you know, so, it, well as I was thinking of this, I, I think of the need for revival and for us to really enter into praise and worship. Uh, I was what we were listening to a, it was either a podcast or a show here the last couple of weeks. And you know, when, in my first book, I, I share how that there's plans within plans, within plans, within plans. That's mm-hmm. the way the Illuminati work. There was a top communist uh, right after world war two that said, listen, for us to take down the Western world, uh, we're not going to be able to do it just by, you know, converting all of them in college. And so part of the plan that they did, now this makes sense when you see with the, the LGBT, you see with the pedophile, uh, you see with 
uh, with what Democrats are doing in um, in San Francisco and stuff. I mean, you know, I'm reading reports. Okay, they have feces all over the streets. And so one of the things in the city council was let's get a power washer and let's let's let's, let's get rid of that. No, 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 that's racist. You can't do that. Why you why you mean? You know, it's like saying. I guess they're saying it's taking away their potties, but you know there have to be ordinances for things like that because well they that's they, they, where they rewrote them spreads. yeah and that's and so you you see all these things and the communist plan was to to be able to they said we're not going to be able to gently convert america that we're going to have to make the western world so putrid that people revolt against that and we'll just take well, over that this revolt. is the kind of thing that does and what you know what gets me is when you look at every one of these cities where all this stuff, where it has almost become untenable. Uh, from what I'm understanding, Austin, Texas is about getting like that, and we, we see places in California and other places. Every one of them are Democratic strongholds. And so, guys, if they're Democratic strongholds, when so when you see their vision come to fruition, you see what's left over in Detroit, you see what's mm-hmm. in these areas. Right. And so, so you know, let's, let's, just, let's just use common sense. If they're the ones creating the problem, we don't turn the problem over to them or just give up. But what's going to change this, Mary, is revival. It is. And and I believe that God's power is getting ready to come. And this is this is why I think a lot of people have thought, well, I'm not seeing God move. I've not seen him do this or that. This is one of those epic moments that we're getting ready to walk into where God in an instant tears down what the enemy's done for maybe hundreds of years. Yes. I mean, working hard to do. You know, Satan is not omnipresent. He doesn't see everything he has to work through connections and communications through the demonic network and things like that. So imagine having this thing all said, and in an instant, we're going to see God turn this thing around. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to see some bad things because God's going to judge righteously. You know, I think, I think one of the big lies the enemy's using right now, because I've actually heard preachers say it, The book of Revelation is going to happen just like it said, so we might as well just go ahead and give up. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Jesus was quite clear. We occupy until he comes. We're about our Father's business. We're to be out in the field working. Now we're to have our garments white, which represents righteousness, walking in the kingdom. But we're to be out in the field until he calls us in. Well, and you know how they, they say to have the, the white linen garments, that's part of the preparing for the feast. I always thought it was so odd that, you know, after uh, Labor Day, there's this uh, unspoken law that you don't wear anything white. Yeah. You know, before the feast, I thought, boy, I tell you, Satan's just worked everywhere to try to strip everything out of what God's Word said. And so I, I am looking forward to these feasts. And, I mean, we've, we, we've seen Satan trying to, to disrupt what we usually do and from all different uh, areas. But I'm telling you, Mike, it's time to praise him. It's time yeah. to lift his name up and declare his greatness over all this earth and declare his goodness. Declare that he, and this is his will right now. This is, this is not just about America. This is about preparing a place so that people that want to serve him can have a place yes. and that we can send out help for those. You know, I don't think that we've sent out the help that we that God's wanted us to. You know, when I look at the, they'll always talk about, okay, we got this thing with Korea. We got this thing with Russia. We've got this thing with Iran. I'm sitting there thinking, bless Henry Groover's heart. Look how many countries he's traveled to, praying for the salvation of those people. That's what our focus needs to be. Father, make this nation a place where we can see the saved come to you. Absolutely. And when you look in the Middle East right now, there are several reports I've been keeping an eye on. One of them uh, is that the um, Muslim government in Iran is concerned because Christianity is growing at such a rapid rate Mm. in their nation that they're projecting within 10 years, uh, they're going to lose power just simply because it's going to become a Christian nation. And I mean, Jesus is supernaturally visiting the sons of Ishmael. Well, and and, I think, I think God's done a lot of that through our troops. Yes. As our troops were over there and all of the horrors that they've went through and things, God's used them. Well, there's revival broke out with them. And uh, there's been so many reports of them hunting down water so they can have baptisms and just so so God is moving mightily. Yeah, it's just it's just in in our nation with the churches in the state they're in we're out of sync. 
we're out of sync. We're not, we're not flowing with his flow. We're sitting here on a different flow that's coming from Babylon. And I'm not saying people are purposely doing that. It's just what we've been led into and didn't know. Over, over a long space long, of time. Long, long You know, time. whenever you deal with principalities, powers, rulers, you're, you're dealing with this principality war. These beings were alive. Now, when you, you read in the book of Job, when God created the heavens, they were already there. Okay. These are very, very, very old uh, entities. So their perspective of time is completely different than ours. They, where, you know, the average Christian has a hard time coming up with a one year plan, two year plan, three year plan. They plan over millennia, they plan over hundreds of years. Yeah. <laughs> and and when you when you listen to those that are that are in the Illuminati and some of the ones that have come out, uh, there was a, in one of the, in one of uh, L. A. Marzulli's videos, he interviewed a guy that had talked to one of the they, they actually call themselves the sons of the Nephilim, and they plan multi generational that they they build their wealth and they pan it to the next generate pass it on to the next generation and say here is the plan there is an occult plan that has been in effect as far as humanity is concerned, since the Tower of Babel. Uh, in fact, I, I've got a quote in the new book that I'm writing that Nimrod gave a charge that Freemasonry is still following today. So there, there is this plan after generation after generation after generation, and we're just putting along, really not even having a one-year, two-year, three-year plan or trying to get into the groove of God's plan. And I, I think part of what's going to happen there's something that happens within us. You see, we need to praise God more than he needs to be praised. Oh, yeah. That, that, that when, when I begin getting in sync with heaven, now it may be with everything else is so messed up in my life that there's no part of my life that's in sync with heaven right now. You just, it's like, you know, I, I, I know Jesus is in my heart, but I can't find Jesus anywhere in my life with what's going on. When I decide in the midst of that, I'm going to praise God like Paul and Silas when they were in prison, yeah, okay, that's right. that all of a sudden there's, there, there will be a transition that the Holy Spirit will begin leading me to where I'm singing the same way that they're singing in heaven. And that becomes a conduit for the power of God to come down to begin working on all the other areas. It's called a sacrifice of praise. If everything's going good and you're praising God, it's not a sacrifice. Yeah. A sacrifice of praise is when everything that can go wrong is going wrong and you yeah. feel like God is a million miles away and you stop and you begin to praise and worship him, not because of your situation, but because of who he is. Oh, preach it, and huh? when you begin praising him because of who he is, and we get this connection with heaven, who he is begins to come and to fill your situations that's and exactly change them right. around. When you sit and that's there and what heaven that. needs right now. That's it. When you sit there and you start saying, Father, I praise you because you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That all of the miracles that you have done throughout time, I praise you because you're merciful. And I praise you because you're good. You're a good father to me. And you just start praising like that. Lift his name up. Declare that Jesus rules and he reigns in, in your area. Declare that you, you forbid the enemy to have that territory and a Joshua anointing to take it. Drive out the ites and say this place is going to bow the knee to Jesus. See, I think there's a transition because this is something that has been kind of floating around in my mind for a while. Um, the Psalms are not only are the, the hymnal and was actually the hymnal of the early church. So, the, so when you open up and begin to read them, that's your hymnal. That, that's your, your praise songs. We need, to, we need to begin returning to those. But there will be a transition once we, we get the praise part down. There are some very significant prayers that were spiritual warfare psalms that David wrote. And there's, I, I think in the times ahead, we're going to have to get in the, into this Davidic-style spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. But you can't go into it until you have the praise down. You see, the reason that David was able to take down Goliath is he said as a young man, hour after hour after mm -hmm. hour, singing singing praises to God, and and it, it would mellow out the sheep, and then the anointing got so strong, it mellowed out a king that had a demon because he wouldn't serve God right. And so there was this transition in the heart of David as he was a praiser and a worshiper. Out of the heart of a praiser and worshiper came a warrior. That's it. 
And so that that's that's where we we need to be right now. We need to fill our homes full of praise and worship. We need to fill our cars full of praise and worship. And the harder the road, the more you praise and worship. That's it, because that's going to bring the victory. Yep. I mean, when you start, and we've experienced this, right, in the midst of great, great trouble, we just start saying, Father, this is who you are. Yep. You're the great I am. <laughs> You're the one that def- defeated the greatest armies that ever were. You're the one that can sustain me. You're, you go ahead of me, and you're my rear guard, and you are, you are almighty. There's nothing you can't do. When you start saying things like that, I'm telling you, heaven connects, yeah. and you will see the power of God come to defend you against an army. You took a young man, and he faced down a giant. You didn't give him an M16. You didn't give him a rocket launcher. You know, I, prefer, I, I would rather have been sitting in a howitzer, okay? Let me show you, let me show you the wrong end of a 155 uh, howitzer, okay? And all there would have been were teeth left. David took a rock. But covenant, a life of praise and worship, a rock and covenant took down a giant that caused all the armies of Israel to be afraid. Mm-hmm. So there's there's this. It, I think that when we, I think one of the things that God's wanting to do, if we'll really begin to dispraise Him, and worship Him for who He is, is when that conduit is made, it's going to not only begin changing the situations around us, it's going to begin imparting into us kingdom courage. That's it. You know, I was I was praying last night, and because uh, I'm I'm. God's really moving on me to teach on authority. I've, I've got the first video. I'm trying to find time now to to edit it. And so we're going to do a series just on authority. Uh, but, God, uh, I was out there working and, and, and just kind of seeking God out in the garage. And um, God said, I want to show you something. Well, in, in our within our culture, one of the number one signs of authority is like a sheriff having a badge. Mm-hmm. And he showed me this believer that was given authority. He threw it up on a shelf never did anything with it, and it got so covered in dust that you couldn't even see what it is anymore. And he says that's where most believers are with their authority because they've not been taught how to function in their authority. Mm-hmm. They've not been taught how to develop their authority. And really when you, when you there's, I'm going to be doing this in the video, but guys, when you read Luke 10, there's this progression. Jesus gives his disciples authority. They're obedient they're casting out devils. They're healing the sick. They come back and they're going, whoo, 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 boy, Jesus, this stuff works. Now, you know, he does several things. Number one, he says, let's, let's bring this thing back into order. Don't, don't be just rejoicing that the devils are subject to you, my name. Rejoice because your name's written in heaven. So let's, let's bring, because he's basically saying, because your name's written in heaven, the demons are doing this. But then he goes another step, and this is one of the things that we miss. Is you know, I, I give you, I, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. At that moment, because of their faithfulness in using their authority, they just got an upgrade in their authority. And stuff about the kingdom: the more you use it, and you're faithful to use it, to him who is faithful shall much be given. You may start with little. But as we use our authority throughout our lives, if we're faithful to hone into God, not misuse authority, but use it at the behest of our king, Mary, there, there have been men and women of God that you can see that move in extraordinary authority. And we thought that was that way out of, out of the bat, but I've read their bibliographies. I've, I've read their lives, and they were faithful with little. God made them faithful over much. And he began, he began rewarding them with greater levels of authority. And where we're getting ready, where the body of Christ is going to be facing in the days ahead, we don't need to have kindergarten authority. We need to have graduate school authority type authority Mm -hmm. and if we will yield to the process yield to the process of the of the holy spirit leading us casting off every weight that so easily besets us letting the word of god correct us letting the word of god teach us who we are now in christ stop listening to the lies of the past and start listening to what god says that we are we begin and we become faithful in it We'll see that God will increase the blessing, increase the authority. We'll begin to see greater answer to prayers. You know, part of this whole process is closing the doors to the devil and opening the doors to God, which is part of the dynamics of what the commandments are about as being empowered by the Holy Spirit. But I, I think that there's a lot of ministers out there, Mary, that they say, okay, I've, I've been faithful. And what, I, what I'm feeling in my spirit is this year there's an upgrade coming. Mm-hmm. 
there's an upgrade because you have been faithful. There are not only rewards in the life to come, there are rewards now because God wants to, God wants to equip. Uh, when I was in the military, you know, a, 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 a private, no stripes, he doesn't go special forces. He's, he's got to prove himself as a soldier and then you can then you can go special forces, and then and what you know and within the the army, then there's delta after the special forces for the elite of those. But it even goes on beyond that. That Navy SEALs come from all four branches. And Mary, did you know that there are? Because when I when when I was in the army, when I look at deltas, okay, they're like the the ultimate kind of soldier. Do you know that there are almost sixty percent of deltas or more drop out of Navy SEAL? school i know it's intense because they they come but they they prove themselves to be faithful and they they prove themselves that they cannot be broken they can they will not give up they will move in their orders they will move in their authority mm-hmm. and one of the interesting thing about navy seals is that they train themselves you solve problems you use the authority that's been given you you deal with when you, you do one step at a time and I, I think that's what we need to do with, okay, I, I'm not worrying about the giant that's 10 miles down the road. I'm going to take care of the demon that's here. I'm going to take care of the affliction that's here. Because by the time I get down the road, God had me face this, God had me face this, and God had me face this. And every time I built more confidence in his authority in me, I built more confidence in what he could tell me and I could hear his voice. Every one of those little steps, many times the the little turmoils we have in life are, are not so that the devil can sink your boat. It's so that God can say, okay, here's a little one. Use what I gave you and take care of it. Okay, now you got that down. It also showed you some doors you need to get rid of. It showed you this. It showed you that. Okay, let's let's go to the next step and the next step and the next step. And as we begin doing that, God kind of takes us from first grade to second grade to third grade to fourth grade to fifth grade, and and each one of those builds our confidence in who He is and who He is in us. And I guarantee you, Mary, when you come to the giant. Our king has prepared you for the giant. That's when it. David got there, he said, this uncircumcised Philistine is no different than the, than the lion or the bear that I've killed. You see, That's God, right. God prepared him before he got there. You're not going to come out of kindergarten and face a giant. No, God always prepares you. And so there's been a lot of things because of God's grace that he has put us in situations. He said, now listen, I got you covered. If you keep your eyes on me, and you praise me and you be obedient to what I've told you to do, you're going to overcome this. And when you get out on the other side, you're going to become stronger because I know what you're going to need to face 10 years down the road, and I've got you in the Holy Ghost school of learning to Mm -hmm. prepare you to be able to move in that kind of authority when you get there. That's it. You know, God doesn't take control of the life of those that aren't his. There's just a pattern, not saying that he won't move in their lives and try to lead them to salvation, things like that. But when you're in covenant with God, then it's a whole different thing. And and he is moving and orchestrating and getting us to where we need to be because we have a divine destiny. And we, once we accept Jesus as our Savior, that's the, the path that he's setting us on. And one of the things that I have personally discovered is that there's a transition in your mind when you get to the place that you become covenant conscious. Boy, you want to talk about governing what you do and you don't do. And it also gives you greater, uh, greater understanding of your authority. It gives you a greater understanding of the power of prayer. It gives you a greater understanding of the power of the blood of Jesus. And I, I think that, you know, as we, we, we turn to publicity, we turn back to the Word of God, not the easy believism that's being postulated on on Christian TV today that we, we have taken grace and we have stretched it out so far that it's no longer, it's, it's almost transparent. You can almost see through it. Instead of being a, a part of the equation, they, they have overemphasized grace to the exclusion of everything else. You know, I, in fact, every once in a while I'll get emails when I'm talking about our need to grow up and this is what God needs to do and, and we're, we're going to have to become spiritual warriors and all this. And I get these emails. Brother Lake, you're undermining grace. You're not giving grace that's due. No, no, no. Grace is what gets you to the place where you can grow up. 
Grace is not the is not an excuse for sin. Grace is the power of God to overcome sin. Yeah. And people forget to realize, uh, besides God's unmerited favor, there's four other levels to grace. And the final one is an overcoming grace. Oh, preach it now. <laughs> and we need to be more than overcomers. But to do that, we've got to grow up. To do that, we've got to learn how to praise God in the most difficult circumstances. We can be like Jehoshaphat that we have these armies coming against us and say, okay, what is the strategy? What, what weapons do we use? And God says, send out the praise and worshipers. The enemies killed themselves. Mm-hmm. And many times, yeah, I remember listening to a, a preacher years ago, and uh, he said that he was going through a real hard time, and I mean, it's, it's like his ministry was about to end and all this. And he, he said, <laughs> this demonic spirit came to say, we're going to kill you now. And he said, the Spirit of God just got all over me, and I began to dance and shout and praise God. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, after a while, that demon said, what are you praising God for? And he said, I didn't realize how desperate you were till that moment a minute ago that you threatened that you were going to kill me. My, yeah, my life true. is in the hand of God, that's it. and I'm not getting out of here one second before he says I'm supposed to go. That's it. And so, but you only have a mindset like that when you're kingdom conscious, when you're covenant conscious. And that, that's, that's part of what this praise and worship, especially going back to the Psalms and using it. That's right. Because it, it's, it's covenant-laden uh, within the Word of God. Well, and that's, there's something about covenant, Mike, that if you don't understand that, you will get a, a skewed view of grace and different things. Yeah. Covenant is so powerful. It is all mixed in with the fear of God, the reverence for God. And so if you don't get covenant, there's so many people think, well, it doesn't matter what I do. God just keeps his covenant with me. Yes, it does matter what we do. Oh, yeah. Covenant is two ways. I thought obedience was better than sacrifice. And so so yeah. if you if you want to have a life where the blessings can't flow, just get those kind of attitudes and keep going down that road, and, and you're going to you know, hit a fence post. Um, and it'll be your fault because the whole time God was trying to keep you from it. But we just see the, 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 what we don't understand about covenant covenant is what protects us from the enemy. Covenant is what opens up the armory of heaven. Covenant mm-hmm. is what opens up the blessings of heaven. And the more seriously we take covenant, the more it opens to us. That's true. And you know, Jesus took covenant very seriously. He went to the cross to cut that covenant for us. And I think it is disrespectful not to take covenant with the same seriousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, you were so serious you gave your life for me, but I just can kind of take it or leave it, or or I know you're going to keep it even though I don't have to. Well, I I have found that people that, that do that, that the devil is usually running roadshot over their life, you know, uh, and they they go from one crisis to another crisis to another crisis to another crisis to another crisis. The way to get the crisis where they're few and far in between is to learn how to walk in covenant and walk in the kingdom. And they're 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 poo pooing the very concepts that's going to get them out of this living from crisis to crisis to crisis to crisis. Do you know, does Mike and Mary have a crisis every once in a while? Yes, we do. But I tell you what, I can see how God has orchestrated to give us the things that we needed before we got yeah, there. That's true. He gives us supernatural grace to get through them. Uh, it's, it's like the stuff with my mom. I, I am amazed at the level of grace that has taken a hold of dealing yeah, with this because true. there's there's been a few times, you know, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd have been pulling out my hair. Uh, but it's this it's just like a supernatural grace that I'm able to respond in, and sometimes over on the other side of it, when you okay, you took care of event number 492, okay? And you look on the other side of it and saying, how in the world did, did I go through that with being cool, cool, you know, cool Joe and, yeah. and, and not getting upset and, and being able to respond in love and, 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 and just to stay calm and collected in yeah, this that's whole true. thing. That's true. And you realize it's the grace of God. And it really is. And, and that's, and that as well as, okay, having wisdom on how to handle every situation, to coordinate things. These are the things that we need to do. It, all of that is open because of taking covenant seriously. That's true. And it opens up for the Holy Spirit to move in us in a more profound way. Uh, and for you and I, you and I are nothing special. No. And I'll, I'll tell anybody that all day long. 
because one of the, one of the problems that uh, Christians, especially at these conferences, want to do, they want to turn us into the rock stars. There's no rock stars in the oh, kingdom of no, God. No. There are faithful servants, and there's one king. And and mostly testifiers. Yeah, and testifiers. testifying of the greatness of God and His goodness in our lives. And everything that has been poured into our lives, as we took covenant seriously. It gave the Holy Spirit an edge to help us get ourselves out of the way so that God could fill. That's it. And any anything good that we have ever done, any any message that I've ever preached or Mary's ever preached that was good, and anything that we have ever written that has touched people's lives, it's because in the midst of that, Mike and Mary have learned to get out of the way. And the more we get out of the way, the better and it just, goes. And let him, and let him <laughs> use us. And what, what really takes hold of that is understanding covenant, and there are times that I know both of us, whether it's writing or, or different things, uh, there are times that we didn't really feel like doing it at the moment, but we we st- we responded at that moment with praise, and the praise loosed the anointing. That's it. That's to, it. To go. Uh, I mean, even sometimes I remember, you know, in the past with services, there have been times I've been so sick I couldn't hardly really stand up. The good praise and worship gave me the strength. And man, when the anointing hit, because the praise and worship prepared the way for the anointing, not only me, but for the entire congregation. And then once I got up there, the anointing hit, the sickness left. Well, and you know, this has been such a tough year, sweetheart, for people with allergies. Everywhere you go, sneeze and cough, and everybody's saying this is the worst year ever. Well, I think that's even something to do with this heat wave that we're having here in the center of the country. It's, It's unnatural this late in September to still be having these high temperatures. Um, and I think it's because it's allowing <coughs> all of these, the ragweed to just flourish and all these things. I honestly think it's a, it's got a demonic nature to it. it and does. I think it's to keep people off their game, keep people to where, you know, they can't get ready for the feast, can't flow with the timing of God. Can't even pray right when you, when you, when you, when you feel real bad and you're hopped up on antihistamines, you're drowsy. Well, and that's it. And so, so I've been, I've been commanding anything that they're using that harp thing for, anything technology that they're trying to manipulate weather and do things like that. You know, even with this, with this mosquito, yeah. you know, once once you get to cold weather, those things go away. But boy, this stuff is just rolling. So you can see Satan's hand in a lot of things. But let's let's read Psalm ninety two. Um, it says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. See, there is a good harp, <laughs> not just this harp they use to control weather. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy, thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not. Neither doth a fool understand this, that when the wicked spring is the grass and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. O Lord, we need that fresh oil. And that horn represents authority. Praise God. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, and those were huge. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Hey, <laughs> I read that the other we're day. We're doing that. And I thought, oh, we're so biblical. No, <laughs> That doesn't mean fat body fat. Well, they, 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 they left out the fluffy. <laughs> they didn't. They, it doesn't mean that. It means that you have abundance. God just meeting every need. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Praise his holy name. See, you can read that and get so happy that you'll be out in your front yard just lifting his name up, exalting his name over all the earth, de- declaring there's none like him. That's right. And so when we, you know, sometimes when you get to that place and you have a hard time even finding words, Mike, grab the Psalms. That's what the word's there for. Yeah, grab it and just start reading it out loud. And I'll tell you, every demon will shake and tremble because they know the power of God's word. And when in with the heart of faith in a believer, man, their time is short. It is. And it's time for us to begin entering into synchronicity with the kingdom. And I I think that if we do these feasts right this year, that there's going to be an alignment in our hearts. There's going mm-hmm. to be alignment in our spirits. And we may end up going, by the time we get on the other side of, of uh, 
tabernacles, we may be surprised at how much we have uh, gotten rid of some things in our life, whether For it's sure. physical things. Yes. Uh, you know, the, if you have physical things on one side and you have stinky attitudes on the other side, and and uh, because we all we all get in the flesh, uh, but we see that God was working and and. There's been a lot of alignment, and a lot of those things are, are now gone. Uh, because heaven is moving, heaven is preparing, it's trying to, uh, you know, and one, one of the things I have found in me, and I don't know if, if you found this in you, is that there is a, a, a renewed seriousness about spiritual things right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, I'm becoming more conscious with my walk with God. I'm become, becoming more conscious of covenant, of authority, and moving in it, and uh, and and I, I know the dynamic that I can only move in authority in the earth to the same proportion that I bow my knee to the king in heaven. And come into agreement with what because God's wanting right delegated now. authority, absolutely. That's it. And I can tell you one of the things that God wants to do. So let's just all get in agreement about that. Physical infirmities are going to be reversed. Yes. And and listen to this other, other psalm here. Psalm 67. It says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth, Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. See, there's a fear factor here that needs to come into play. The good, healthy fear of God needs to come back to this earth. And they're going to fear him just like he did in the old days because he would take his people and do such miraculous things that they would be in awe of what God had done. And, that, and that's when you would see the king say, whoa, we've, we've got to take a look at this God, you know, that's, that's moving here in Israel, moving among the tribes. You know, look, they always sent Judah out first. Yeah. And Mike, I'm telling you, there's, there's the bloodline of Judah in God's people that he's raising up to start praising him praising him, unabandoned praise, just just letting it rip, <laughs> yeah. because he wants to heal us. He wants to bring uh, bring such miraculous events through his people that everyone starts taking notice. We gotta, we've got an end-time harvest that's supposed to come in, and it's not going to be this stinking harvest that they do these harvest home celebrations. I want to see the power of God move so much that they couldn't get a child sacrifice on Halloween if they had to. I'm asking God to send angels in such might and power to surround the little children and to forgive every sin that gave Satan any kind of right to their lives so that they can't get one. That's right. In the name of Jesus. One of the things, and going back to the healing, the concept of the Day of Atonement is when the king comes, and it's the difference between the the tear and the wheat. You see, the wheat have humbled themselves, the tear stand erect. And there's a concept with, with when, when Messiah comes back, when Messiah comes on the Day of Atonement, anything that has not humbled before him is cut off, Okay. So I think one of the things that we need to do this year, if there's sickness and disease in our body, during the day, during the 10 days of awe, part of the, part of the process is making sure everything's right between you, God, and you and man, okay? Make sure that every door is closed. Make sure that, that, that uh, there's not unforgiveness and all these different things. When we bow before the king and that sickness and disease refuses to leave before the day of atonement because it hasn't bowed its knee and left, it'll be like a tear, and what I'm believing this year, Mary, is that we're going to have supernatural healings yes. all yes. across the body of Christ I believe on the it. Day of Atonement. I believe there's reversals coming of sickness, disease. God's got a plan, and we're going to get in agreement with it. And we're going to be with his time. He said, that's what Satan doesn't want. If, if he can get a faith-filled believer in the timing, in the, in the same uh, flow of heaven and God's will on this earth, he knows he's in trouble. Yeah, he does. He knows he's in trouble. He knows his plans will fall apart. And we need to be praying for the president that God leads him, even if he doesn't understand it sometimes, leads him in a direction to where this nation's going to return to God, that, that through this nation there will be people saved and he, delivered and healed. Absolutely. From every, from every nation, every, every tribe nation. and every nation, so that they will declare his greatness on this earth. 
Because uh, there, there's going to be a restoration. As God builds an army, there's going to be a restoration. You know, the other day, uh, I was just thinking, and that's one of the reasons I'm taking, you know, trying to get more in shape and lose some weight more more seriously because I, I'm sensing what God wants us to do. And it's take like, strength. <laughs> it, yeah, it's like, okay, uh, my age is, is standing in the way, but there's and, and, and different things. And so I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to do these things because I've got too much to do in the kingdom. I, I, I see too much that he's wanting to do for me to be encumbered by these things. And I, I think all of us need to target what's encumbering us from really getting active for God. If it's sickness and disease, if it's, you know, it's being out of shape, overweight, whatever it is, you know, even well, you know, Mike, I'm old. Well, he can, he can renew my youth. He can renew he really my strength. Can. That's in the Psalms. That's in the he, prayers in the Psalms. He really can. And, uh, you know, I, I know brother, uh, Henry Groover is, is facing a real battle right now. Oh, let's keep praying. We need to keep Our praying brother, for him. Henry. Uh, but I'm here a couple of years ago at, uh, at, uh, hear the watchman down in Dallas. Okay. I saw him do everything but a backflip. I almost seemed, I saw him do the same thing in True Legends at, you know, 2017 when the anointing of God hit yes, him. Yes, what an encouragement. He was like a 25-year-old. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And, uh, I mean, at, in, in Dallas, uh, he started, I think, like at 8 o'clock <laughs> or something like that, 8.30. And uh, it was about uh, 15 till midnight. He was still jumping into preaching and going on. And I, I said, okay, Henry, I'll pray for you, but I'm going to pray for you <laughs> from my room because I've got to go lay down. I think that he can can last, outlast, no telling how many people. That anointing so strong on him. And, Father, we just pray right now for yes. him. We just lift him up to you. And, Father, as a memorial prayer, we ask you to remember everything that he's done, the sacrifices he's made when he's been away from his family. Father, to do your will in this earth. Father, we ask for an outpouring yes. of miracle healing power to flow through him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, that we may glean from his wisdom in these last days. Yes. In Jesus' name. Father, he's been a faithful servant, and when it's time for him to go home, he doesn't need to go home like this. No, no. And Father, show your great power yes, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. And guys, get your praise on. This is the season to get your praise on because God's going to do a lot of things. Yes, he is. And he's going to realign things in our life. I think he's going to realign, realign things not only in this nation but around the world. And what's breaking my heart right now, Mary, is I'm seeing revival in China. I'm seeing revival in the Middle East. I'm seeing revival in Muslim nations. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm seeing revival in Israel. Uh, Zev Peratz out there, and I mean, he's winning leading rabbis yeah. to Jesus. And uh, we need to have some revival here in America. God's getting ready to do he's it. He's getting ready he's, to do it. He's getting ready to tear and as we, down and as we cry what out the for enemy's it, built. We, we, don't, we don't need revolution. We need no, revival. We need revival, Father. In we the name of Jesus, of send it spirit. with your great power. In Jesus' name. Fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Power up, power up, power up, power up, power up.